Hey everybody, Duff Blade here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ. It's kind of a crazy weekend, so today I'm recording in the bedroom with baby Duff Blade, who is currently making a Lego down here. So if you hear some clinking sound, that's him. Do you want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> oh! Okay, say hi. <laughs> that wasn't very enthusiastic. Be like, hi! Okay, good. Anything you want to say to the people on the camera? Uh, no. No, okay. So you go down to your Lego and just try to be quiet while I'm talking, okay? Okay. <laughs> this video is brought to you by my original novel series, The Nine Heavens and Ten Earths. Uh, check the link in the description below or the pinned comment. That's the best way to support the channel at the moment. So today I'm going to be talking about some customs that are common in China and in Chinese culture that might seem a little bit strange or unusual to people from outside China, especially those in the Western world, as they are a little bit different. They're customs that appear in Chinese fantasy novels a lot. I have seen them with my own eyes, and so if you're a fan of these novels, you probably have too. They might have jumped out to you as you were reading and seemed strange to you, or you might have just glossed over them, not really even noticing what you were reading, because some of them aren't necessarily very dramatic, but they're very common. So let's get into these customs. The first I'm going to talk about very briefly is wedding and marriage customs. That is actually a topic that could be an entire book or volumes of a series of books. Maybe it already is. I don't really know. And I'm sure you could probably do a little bit of Googling or search on YouTube to find a lot of information about how Chinese wedding and marriage customs work. Suffice it to say, there are a couple different things about them that are probably really obvious. The thing about Chinese uh, wedding and marriage customs is that they do vary from area to area. So it's not really possible, in my opinion, to basically say, this is how Chinese weddings work. Uh, that said, there are some commonalities. For example, the bride is not going to be wearing white, generally speaking. White is a color associated with death and with funerals. So traditionally speaking, the bride would not wear white. Uh, red is going to be the common color. In terms of the actual ceremony, there's going to be kowtowing, uh, and there's going to possibly be the offering of and a drinking of tea. And there are other customs that are associated with it, but suffice it to say, it's not the Western way in which you walk, walk down the aisle and then there's like a officiator who says some words then you exchange vows is different than that. Another thing about Chinese weddings and marriages is that they are generally arranged. Now arranged marriages are going to be a lot more common in ancient culture but they still do exist today. I knew people, uh, workmates and associates in China, Chinese people who basically their parents arranged for their marriage uh, and you know sometimes they liked that and went along with it, sometimes not. Of course, it's a lot more common in China nowadays than it was in the past for young people to date and to meet somebody that they like and you know, fall in love and get married in the kind of common way that happens in the West nowadays. That is definitely way more common in China now. That said, even when the marriage isn't actually specifically arranged by the parents or the families, in other words, the families deciding who gets married, when that doesn't happen, there still is a lot of involvement on the side of the family that it goes beyond what happens in the West. A lot of times there's a matchmaker involved, or at least a go-between, because the issue of money is very important. Now again, customs vary from place to place, but for the most part, the ideal way for young people to get married in China is for the families of both the bride and the groom to provide financial things, whether that's a house coming from one side and a car coming from another side or maybe just cash coming from one side and a house coming from another side or whatever it is, I've heard different versions. The point is that it's almost like a business transaction in which one side provides something, the other side prov provides something and that's why sometimes there's an intermediary. The point being that these arrangement aspects are definitely a lot more complex and different than they are in the West and so you will see that reflected in the Chinese fantasy novels. So moving on, another common practice in Chinese culture is escorting people away or seeing them off. When somebody comes to visit you, whether it is at your office, your house, or wherever it else it is that you are, when they come to visit you and the time comes to part, you will see them off by escorting them some distance away. Now the degree to which you escort them away is going to be dependent on how much respect you are showing them. And of course some of it will have to do with the level of familiarity between the two of you. So for instance, if it's your friend who you've known for your entire life and you see each other all the time, you might not necessarily need to walk them all the way to their car. However, if you have your boss over to, for dinner to your place, you are definitely going to escort them as far as possible. A lot of it has to do with the social superiority or inferiority of the person who is visiting. So going with another boss example, if I visit my boss 
at my boss's house. My boss is the social superior. My boss might not feel the need to escort me past the front door. So again, how far do you escort them is showing respect to them. And if it's somebody you need to show respect to, you are going to escort them as far as possible. In a real life situation, imagine you live in an apartment complex uh, with multiple floors. You might take them to the front door or to the elevator, or you might go into the elevator with them and down to the main entrance of the building. You might go out of the building and to the parking garage, to their car, or maybe they didn't take a car, you, you might take them all the way to the subway station. It really just depends on uh, who it is that you are escorting away, their social standing compared to yours. Of course, not, not escorting somebody out can be very disrespectful. Now, that's especially true in fantasy novels where you, have, you might have two clans meeting each other or two you know, powerful people meeting each other. If you ever see a situation in one of the novels where somebody kind of angrily says, I uh, see yourself out or there's no need for me to escort you away or something like that, that could be a very insulting thing depending on the circumstances. Or it could just be a situation where, for instance, uh, I go visit my boss at the office uh, to give a report and my boss is busy, my boss could easily see could easily say something like, see yourself out, and that wouldn't necessarily be disrespectful just because the person is busy. Now again, there is no black and white list of rules as to exactly how this works in every situation, so it can really just depend. For instance, maybe there's a situation where my boss comes to visit me at my home, but my kids are screaming, and then there's you know a, a disaster in the kitchen, and then I he knows that I have to work in the morning. I might say, oh, I don't think I can see you off, and he'll say, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. So everything that I said just moments ago can be taken with a grain of salt, depending on the circumstances. The third thing I want to talk about is something that actually was very confusing to me at first. I learned my lesson very quickly, but it just really kind of blew my mind, and that is the refusing of gifts. For the most part in Chinese culture, when somebody offers you a gift, you should refuse it. You should say, no thanks, oh you really shouldn't have, I can't accept this gift. Then they will say, no, no, really, you have to take it, it's, it's a gift for me to you. And then you say, no, really, it's too much, I can't accept it. This refusal, from what I have been told by Chinese people, should at least go to about three times. In other words, you should refuse a gift at least three times before accepting it. And you should see this in novels a lot. Of course, there are many caveats. For example, if you are a person of lower social standing and you are being given a reward of some sort, that's a totally different matter. Or if somebody is going to give tribute to somebody that's of a much higher social status than them, then of course that person wouldn't need to refuse the gift. But most of the time, if a social equal is giving you a gift, you should refuse it. I did learn this the hard way when I was very new to Chinese language and culture, and uh, I visited uh, the family of a mutual friend or something, and uh, an elder generation person offered me a gift me being brand new to Chinese culture and language just said, oh wow, thanks, this is amazing. And of course nothing bad happened. It's not like they were super angry. They just were kind of like confused and a, a little bit taken aback. In a similar vein, and this is a, kind of built into the third point, but maybe it's a fourth point, or maybe it's a 3.5 point. That is that it is also really common in Chinese culture to make offers. It might be of gifts, or it might be offering to do something for somebody or with them that is not a real offer. In other words, it's just a formality and it's just a way of being polite for somebody to say, hey, why don't we go do this together one day? Like, why don't we go traveling together one day? Or, my uncle owns a tea shop, I'd love to give you some tea. I'm kind of just coming up with random examples off the top of my head. The point is just, it is common to offer things which are not intended to be followed through upon. And everybody kind of knows it that's involved in the situation. I think for most Chinese people, it just kind of is such a deeply ingrained part of the culture and the mindset that they don't even really think about it. But for foreigners, it can be kind of confusing. I'll give some examples. For instance, as a teacher, uh, of young ones, it was really common for the parents of my students to take me out to dinner. And I cannot tell you how many times parents would offer to do certain things for me or with me. You know, like I was mentioning the traveling. I had so many parents say, hey, one day why don't we all go together and travel to this, this scenic spot? It's going to be great. I, I had parents offer that to me over and over again. Not a single one ever followed through with an actual invitation. And it, because I, it wasn't really expected. They were just being nice in that moment. Another one that I think is really funny was, and I may have told this story on the channel before, I honestly can't remember, there was a situation in which a bunch of us foreign teachers were invited to a dinner with the friend and adult student of one of our mutual foreign friends. Man, and this guy was rich. I mean, really, really rich. I think the kind of level of rich where I'm pretty sure he owned his own plane or helicopter, but I could be mistaken about that. The point is, he was just had a lot of money. And so it was basically this one Chinese guy uh, 
the foreigner who was his teacher, and then a bunch of us um, other foreign teachers who were mutual friends, and we did have some Chinese people present. However, the foreigner was doing the translating for his student, because his student, despite having studied English quite a bit, wasn't really that good in English. And as it turned out, one of the other uh, friends, one of the other foreigners, was getting ready to leave China and go back to the United States, and they were talking about this, and he was saying, um, oh yeah, I'm leaving on Thursday or something, I can't remember what it was. The extremely super rich Chinese businessman, uh, through the translation of the mutual friend, said, oh really? Well, I have a car. I could drive you to Beijing to the airport. Now keep in mind, we're like a three or four hour drive from Beijing. There was no way this business guy was really offering to drive him to the airport. He was just being nice. But of course, all of us ignorant foreigners had no idea. Well, actually I did at the time, but this guy didn't. He basically said, you have a car and can drive me to the airport? Great, what time can you pick me up? And the businessman was was like obviously taken aback. The friend who was translating also didn't really know much about Chinese culture at the time. He was pretty good with the language, but he culturally was missing out on a lot of things. He had no idea what was going on either. And so he was like translating to the guy saying, oh, he wants you to take him to the airport. When can you pick him up? It was a really embarrassing situation and pretty funny from the perspective of somebody who knew what was actually going on. So that's it for this video. I hope that these different cultural aspects, yeah? Yeah, huh? turn, turn up and down. What? Look, Daddy, that was done, 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 and I can show you what you, 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 but, but my airplane's done. Oh, that's cool. Okay, let me, I'm almost done with this video, okay? Well, I'm doing the concluding remarks. So that's it for this video. I hope that these insights into Chinese culture can be helpful to those of you who read these novels a lot, because I think you will see these things come up probably more often than you realize now that you are looking for them. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please do like and subscribe. Please share the video with people you think might enjoy it. And please do check out The Nine Heavens and Ten Earths, which is my original uh, cultivation, cyberpunk, cyberpunk cultivation novel that if you like the content on my channel, I think that you will enjoy. That's it for this video. I will see you next time. Galtzala. Can you say Galtzala? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Dad, look. What? Look, Dad, look, watch. Let's see, I can.